Hey everyone and welcome to In Essence Movement. I'm your host Paresh Nama. I started the show so I could bring to you the people that motivate and inspire me because I know success leaves clues. And with those clues we can ask ourselves better questions and reflect so we can discover our true potential and who we are in essence. Today on the show we have a man with a purpose. He dreams to make a difference and from where I'm standing he's achieved past tense and continues to do so. This former professional rugby league player, having played in England, Australia and finishing his career with, uh, back home with the Warriors, then goes on to have a successful teaching career. He goes on to lead as principal the incredible transformation of One Tree Hill College and now he's principal at Howick College and he's making a difference there. I was fortunate, fortunate enough to spend some time with the Māori Pacifica student leaders there and it's clear not only in the way that they interact with him, but more importantly, that the way that they speak about him when he's not in the room, just how much of an impact he's having. He was recognized with the Sir Peter Blake Emerging Leader Award. He's helping young New Zealanders break barriers and he is making a difference. He is Eva Ropati. Eva, thank you so much for being here. Ta Rofa, good to be here. <laughs> It's, uh, it's a pleasure. Um, like I said, I spent some time at Howard College uh, with Darren, who's uh, been on the show previously. And um, yeah, it's just incredible the, the impact and what you're doing. So firstly, thank you for that. Mm. Um, it's definitely what's needed, uh, especially at that early age. Mm. So thank you. Um, Eva, it's clear that you've, uh, you've had a long and very successful and fruitful career. Uh, I guess where I want to start with you is what is your purpose? Like, why do you do what you do? And what's your drive to keep going for so long? I, the, the, my purpose has always been um, to be someone who is able to contribute to improving outcomes, not just for young people, but, but for our communities and our, and our country. So my, my absolute purpose really is, is to do some mahi that's actually going to make a difference. Yep. Um, and to give young people an opportunity to be the best that they can possibly be. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem we have in, uh, in education, in New Zealand particularly, is that um, we, we still have um, a bit of a divide between you know, kids who succeed and, and kids who don't. Yeah. And it saddens me um, you know, to, to see that sort of division happening. Every single young person in, in our country um, sh should be able to enjoy the, you know, the moments of success that, that allow them to become um, uh, positive, contributing members to our, to our communities mm. and, and country. Sadly, that's not always the case. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's, that's why God has put me on this <laughs> earth and that's what drives me every day. I, I get a heck of a kick out of of um, participating and being part of a process that leads to really cool outcomes. Yeah. That's what gets me up in the morning. I, you know, I have done it for a long time now. This is my 18th year wow. uh, in school leadership. But, but, but honestly, you know, it's um, every day is uh, an exciting new um, challenge. Um, I, I just, you know, I don't, I don't get tired of uh, of the work. Um, it's the most rewarding, um, satisfying stuff that, that anyone can be involved in. Yeah. In fact, I'll probably even say, you know, my, my job um, is pretty unique um, in that, you know, that the, 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 the journey, um, seeing young th people through their secondary school years is, is um, full of highs and lows and, and they're all cool, great mm. experiences. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. Uh, you talked about improving outcomes. What do you mean by, or what outcomes are you talking about? You know, um, um, education is, is much more than about um, academ academic outcomes, you know, and, and uh, I think any, any teacher who believes that they are only there for the academic stuff is, is probably not seeing the full picture. Mm. Um, so, so outcomes for me, and this is why you know I think the, the the job is so varied and and important in our in our our community is is that you you know you're looking for social outcomes, you're looking for academic outcomes, you're looking for cultural outcomes, you, all sorts of different um, aspects of a young person's life. Yeah. 
is really important, and they all gel and they all come together Absolutely. in that in that um, you know that six hours that they're at school. Mm. Um, if it was just about academic outcomes, we'd we'll, you know would we'll be in and out of there and 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 produce results or not. Um, but we'll miss a golden opportunity to develop the real person, you know, the person who sits behind all of those qualifications yep. and, and, and academic achievements. Yeah. And that's the beauty of, of, of the role. And that's, that's the important part for me. You know, it's, it's not one dimensional, it's multi-layered, multi-dimensional. Um, and when all those parts of a young person's life come together, that's when the magic occurs. Mm. And it's interesting because we try to do that at work, right? We, talk, we hear about so many of these leaders, like we've got yeah. you know, so many of these leaders up on the wall here. They talk about your, you, you don't come to work, you come, well, when you come to work, it's, you're not just here to work, you're here to, we're here to develop people, we're here to build a family, you build a community and things like that. Unfortunately, there's not very many teachers or, or uh, leaders like you um, in the education world, I believe, mm. right? Um, you talked about social outcomes, you talked about cultural outcomes. Mm. When did you realize that that was important? Because to be honest, there's not a lot of teachers out there that, mm. that know that. Um, I, I, I draw on my own sort of yeah. background, my own experience, my own upbringing, and, yeah. and how I you know, sort of felt I'm, I'm Samoan, you know, I've, I'm, a, I'm a member like yourself of a minority uh, ethnic group in, in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. and. And you can, you know, you can either embrace that and 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 be part of the richness that all of that diversity creates, or uh, you you can, you know, teach to the to the middle and exclude some of those. Um, and you know, a part of my journey through through education as a young person growing up um, it probably hasn't always been been um, pleasant for yeah. those reasons. But when, when I've connected with a teacher or another adult who recognises that I'm more than just, uh, you know, a bum on seat mm. um, and, and recognises that, you know, I actually I have a family, uh, and I, uh, I am Samoan and I have a different perspective and, and I go to church and, you know, I have, a, I have another language, that, that's when you begin to understand the, that, that you matter. And that you belong, yeah. and you have an identity there, as in in the same way as everyone else. Yeah. And um, I, I guess when I started to feel that, um, you, you 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 begin to understand the importance for all young people having that that belongingness within a school, and it's not just about academic outcomes. Mm. The other, the flip side of that is, um, um, you know the. The, what what makes a person successful in life is their whole being, and so as a teacher and as a leader, um, we, we've got to plan for that diversity and that difference within our community, yeah. and our school, um, in if we're wanting the best outcomes for them, as a whole. So um, yeah, you know you, that is a um, an important part of of our work uh, at school, so it's certainly an important part of my leadership, uh, which is around inclusion and making sure that we, you know, we, we, um, we address all the issues of engaging a young person and, and that means um, understanding who they are as, mm. a, as, a, as an individual yeah. and then embracing that and, and including that in our, you know, our plans for school improvement overall. Yeah. Yeah, well, I commend you on, on realizing that it, it is a holistic approach, right? It is. Um, I remember when I was at school and, and then having spent time, a uh, little bit of time with the Pacifica, Maori Pacifica students at your school, um, I always try to fit in. And I was, at, at primary school, I was one of like three Indian kids. Um, and then growing up, uh, there was always more Indian kids coming into to the schools. But I was always trying to fit in. Mm. Uh, I was always afraid to speak about my culture mm. uh, or my language. Um, but having spent time with at Howard College, mm. they're, they're extremely proud of who mm. they are, extremely proud of who they are, mm. um, and that's and I can only commend you and your leadership on that. And it's so good to hear that. Um, you know, one of the one of the things um, that I carry with me every day um, is the fact that I am Samoan. You know, yeah. I am I am uh, different from from many others, and in a in a way. 
you know, that is um, my way of showing, you know, the world that, that regardless of, of background, of ethnicity, of, of, of anything else that might, might be considered to be different, mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you, you can't be successful and be, you know, equally exactly. um, um, able to participate. Yep. And in some cases, even more so than, yeah. than others. And so that's what, that's what I, I hope to do, you know, just from, you know, just being who I am. Yep. If that reflects really well on others and they can see that, you know, then, then that's, a, that, that's a, a really good outcome for me. Mm. Um, because, you know, it's, it's sometimes um, it is, um, it is a, a consequence of, of not being proud of your identity that can sometimes hold you back. Yeah. Because then you start to conform, right? And then when you start to conform, you start to compare yourself with everyone else because you think you're you you're just as equal as that person, not realizing your unique differences. And we all know that as soon as you start to compare yourself to the person next to you, there's always going to be someone that's smarter than you, someone that's faster than you, someone yeah. that's got a more funnier than you, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and without realizing your unique yeah. differences or your unique traits, yeah, you're always going to be in a negative mindset. Yeah. Have yeah. you had that? Have you found that at, at school or with your students at all? Um, I look at uh, our school uh, is um, it's predominantly New Zealand European. Mm -hmm. we're, uh, we're about eighty yep. percent um, New Zealand European, and um, Māori make up about twelve or thirteen percent, and Pacifica about six percent. So it's it's a pretty small group, yeah. and. Um, and um, you know that they're, they're courageous individuals who I, I you know I, I admire because they um, they are prepared to put themselves in that you know that different context. Mm -hmm. um, they they have a choice. They they can go to you know another school where there is more of a balance, but they're able to walk tall in our environment and yeah. be really proud of who they are, yeah. knowing that they are a small group, and. You know that's that's what encourages me, and and like I said, you know, if if I have some influence on them being even more courageous to be who they are and to shine as as Maori or Pacifica or or any other minority ethnic group, then that is a big you know a big plus. Mm. And um and and sometimes the first step to to being as successful as they want to be, starting with themselves. Yeah. It takes a lot of courage, Aid, in order to do that. Absolutely. And, um, and I admire that in young people. But sometimes they just need a little bit of, you know, a little bit of um, encouragement and permission. Yeah. Um, and if they see me, then all good. Yeah. Well, it's, it's clear that you're doing it. Speaking of permission, you once said uh, young people just need permission to be themselves and to succeed. Mm. How do we give them that permission? Um. You know, I, I think in a school environment, we 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 um, we provide loads of opportunities. Mm. You know, and leadership is an important part of of my work in the school. Yep. And I work hard on on developing, nurturing, and providing opportunities for young people to exercise leadership, whatever that might be. Mm. And that doesn't necessarily mean you know that you you have to be the the loudest in the room and shout from the front or anything like that. You can be on the side. You can, you, you know, you you can be behind and still exercise some of that leadership influence. Yeah. But but mostly it's about character leadership and and being a leader of of self um, and believing that you have something to offer mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. And 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 that's in in a way that's that permission. It's it's someone believing you and your potential um, as a person who can lead. And, and again, like I said, the, the leadership might just be about um, setting a high standard for yourself, not knowing that actually other people are watching you. Yeah, true. And, and, you know, that quiet, you know, sort of um, leadership in the, in, in the back row is, is equally as important as the one, you know, who's, who's actually in charge of a group and standing in front of. Mm -hmm. So, given permission, 
by giving them opportunity um, uh, and reinforcing that um, they, there is some value in them participating, whatever that might be. Like I said, it might be in the arts, it might be in sport, yeah. it might be in culture or in some other aspect yeah. of school life. The yeah. more opportunities you give young people to to push some boundaries and to explore their own um, identity and, and self-leadership and belief, the, the, the better they will become as, as young people. Mm, yeah, I love that, Eva. Um, and it's clear that you're doing that there. I just wish there were more um, uh, school leaders out there that were doing the exact same. Yeah, it's a, interesting. And, and this, is, this is, you know, one of the flaws in, in education. Um, we, 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 you know, every single young person should have an equal mm -hmm. opportunity to be, to be the best that they can be. Yep. Every single school should be um, in a place where they're able to do that. Every single school should have a leader and a senior leadership team and a board that are up to the task and doing exactly that. In New Zealand, that's not always the case. And, and the reality is that, um, um, that there are different levels of expectations, different levels of how schools are responding to the needs of young people. Based on what? Well, they're, they're based on, the, on the, 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 you know, the school direction, the, 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 the capability of the leadership in the school, the capability of the, of the teachers in the school, um, and how they, how they plan and, and, and deliver some, on some of those outcomes. Does decile rating play into that? What's that? Does decile rating play into that at all? Uh, look, I, I think the, the decile stuff is just an excuse um, not to be able to deliver the same high standards right across. Sometimes, you know, we can hide behind those those sorts of mm. labels <laughs> and it becomes easier to sort of drop a level or two yeah. or three in terms of what I expect from my staff yep. and my community and, and others. Yeah. And that's why I say, you know, um, it, it, it's, it's disjointed and... And um, we don't have the same high level of expectation. You know, thank you for all the, the positive things you said about um, our kids and how they respond to me. And but you know what? It's it's um, it, it's it's just about a school community valuing young people as individuals, and having having expectations that all of them will be included, all of them will succeed. Um, no excuses. And, and that is, you know, that's just about um, a school leader and, 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 a, and a leadership group and of having those really clear um, focus and priority areas that says exactly that. Yeah. You know, I would like for you to come to my place again at some, at some point in time and have a look through some of the stuff, because it's easy just to say that, isn't it? Mm. But if you come and, and you have a look at some of our planning, it's exactly that. How do we give young people a voice? How do we touch the life of the, the Samoan kid or the Māori children over here? Or How, how do we actually include them? Because yeah. it's easy for me to sit here and say, blah, 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 I'm doing this. Yeah, but actually, you know, underneath all of that, not a lot happening. And that's the variation um, that, that um, all schools should... Um, should have in place, mm. and that comes with you know it's a, a, a not, not necessarily a one size fits all, but but a capability sort of a framework for every single leader. Th these are the things that, in terms of your own leadership, you should be working on or should have attained. Yeah. And I, you know, without you know giving myself a rap, I'm I, I think I know what my priorities are, and I I go about them carefully and strategically in order to make sure that those outcomes are, um, are delivered. Mm. And I can, attest, I, I can attest to that because of that little time that I did spend there, that was the feeling mm. that I got. Um, and it's not, a, it's, not a, it's not a means to an end, it's not a nice thing to say. Mm. You can actually see it happening. Yeah, uh, that, and that's, that's a good, it's really good to hear. Yeah. You know, I, I would like to think um, that that was the case, I'd be, I'd be distraught um, if you know um, if there was a there, there was a a um, 
a, a, a decline in, in that type of engagement mm. from, from all young people, but particularly for Māori and, and Pacifica. So, you know, I, I'm encouraged to hear that. And, and like I said, we work really, really hard in order to make sure that those young people are engaged, happy, connected, and, and have a sense of belonging. Yeah. So important, eh? Very, very important. Because mm. you won't, you, you know, you just won't, you won't get them fully engaged, you won't get them learning, you won't get them pushing their, their own um, um, boundaries unless they feel really safe and secure. In other words, that you actually, you know, you, you give a toss mm -hmm. about me and, and, and not just my learning, but my, my whole well-being. Yeah. So important. Very important. And they're spending so much time at school. <coughs> yeah. You yeah. look at the ones who, who uh, drop out of school for whatever reason, um, the ones who, you know, who, who unfortunately sort of leave school without anything. They're the ones who, who, will, who will offer you the richest source of information in terms of your, your planning forward. Because mm. they will tell you what, it, what, it, what reality looks like for them on the ground. Mm. And, um, and, and, you know, again, I, I wish some school leaders and boards would, would, he, would do more with that information because they would they'd go from there to here pretty quickly. But they tend to write those kids off. Well, they're too hard basket. Yeah. Um, they were a nuisance to begin with. Mm. Their parents were a nuisance. Um, you know, it's this low expectation stuff, hiding behind, you know, some of the labels, some of the stereotypes, um, not, you know, not willing to, to push um, uh, in order. To, to make sure that you know they they engage all students, not just the lucky few. Yeah. How we open up that conversation and and get more leaders to think that way? Well, you know, funny enough, um, <coughs> I have a new uh, role at the moment, which is working for the teaching council. Mm -hmm. I've taken five months um, off um, my role at Howick and was seconded on to the council for, uh, for that period of time. My, the task I've been given uh, is to lead a national strategy um, of leadership and uh, specifically around um, how principals, leaders of schools from primary all the way through to secondary schools can be uh, better supported to, to deliver the highest um, outcomes possible for young people. Wow. So this is a really cool opportunity yeah. for me to, to do a little bit of the, you know, the, the mahi around lifting mm -hmm. the, the, the capabilities of school leaders in terms of providing a, a plan for the Teaching Council and the Ministry of Education of how they could best be supported. Yeah. Because the reality is, you know, uh, there, are, uh, there are some um, school leaders who, who, who for, for, for no fault of their own, may not have access to that professional learning. Right. The, 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 the stuff that they need to become the best leaders they can possibly be. And I'm, not, I'm certainly not saying I'm the best leader. I'm learning also, and every day I, I learn to be, mm. be a better. Um, but I've been around for 18 years now. I've, I've seen um, what happens when leaders are not fully equipped, not well supported. Um, they either, you know, do a disastrous job looking after their school and the well-being of young yep. people, um, or they they they, they leave yeah. um, and and exit the profession. That that, that none of those scenarios are, are, are ideal mm. at all. What is needed is for high quality, high performing, high functioning leaders that that know their communities and know how to get the best um, out of their staff in order to in order to give opportunities for young people to be the most successful individuals they can be. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's what I'm doing. That's and, very you cool. know, and it's, a, it's at a systems level. Yeah. Whereas, you know, the, again, you know, school leaders, they work in, in pockets, in small pockets and slightly bigger ones, but they're still working sort of relatively isolated yeah. in their regions. Yep. The, 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 the biggest way to make a system change is to work, you know, in the, 
in, in the Ministry of Education, the, the Teaching Council, the, um, the, the NZQA qualification, in those big mechanical mm -hmm. uh, areas, because that's where you, you know, your big system changes will eventually roll down yeah. into the regional and, um, and local um, sort of areas. Yeah, yeah. Were you shoulder tap for that or...? No, um, it was by application, okay. and um, uh, I, I saw it, and I thought, "Wow, this is, it's you know, this is an yeah. opportunity for me to share." Yeah. Be be because that's, uh, you know, again another flaw of our system, is that we're we're still working within these these you know sort of isolated sort of school mm -hmm. things, and and like I said, you know, there are some great schools, but they tend to to work on their own. Yeah. You have some down the road there. You have a poor performing school, and they won't learn because everyone's sort of closed shop and doing their own thing, or they're too busy, or or, or the comp competitive spirit doesn't allow that that you know sharing of yeah. of information or good practice. Yeah. The the systems level will allow us to break down some mm -hmm. of those things and to and to get to get schools to talk to each other and learn from each other yeah. and share stuff that works for you at Mount Ross School will work here else you know. Mm. Well, well, that's really important. I'm glad mm. something's happening about it. Cool. So that that all sounds very interesting. Like I said, I'm glad that that's happening, mm. um, and you're you're the right person for the job. Um, I want to take it a step back, uh, quite a few steps back. Um, you you made a huge transformation at One Tree Hill. What were your thoughts going into there? Well, that's a story and a half. <laughs> hey, look, um, you, you know, I, 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 that was my first principalship. Yep. I was uh, a deputy principal at Orni Hunga mm -hmm, High School. Yeah. And um, and I was only there for, I think, about four years in that role. So I still had a whole heap of learning to go. And I loved working under the principal at the time, Chris Saunders. Mm -hmm. Taught me a lot about uh, leadership, but not enough to fully prepare myself for this role. So anyway, uh, Penrose High School uh, position came uh, came about, and I, you know, you know, I was excited about the leadership um, opportunity. Made application at the time. I was thirty four years old, young. Wow. Uh, uh, um, uh, not a lot of other people would dare apply at that uh, at that young age. But mm -hmm. anyway, I, you know, I was keen to make a difference, and and uh, and I made application. Um, got it. And I remember thinking, oh my goodness, you know, what do I do now? You know, I wasn't quite expecting this. Yeah, I wanted it, but yeah. I wasn't quite expecting it. I got it. It was the most challenging um, uh, job I have ever done in my life, but it was mixed with the, the, the best and worst experiences in, in my career. And I'll start off firstly with the, the, the bad stuff, and then I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the yep. good stuff. Be because um, um, Penrose was was a failing school. It was it was a school that had a really really poor um, public perception. Uh, if it was a school that was um, predominantly seen as a place that if you couldn't get in anywhere else, Penrose was for you. They'll take anyone. It had uh, very, very poor academic achievement. Um, it, it had a culture of, um, of just, you know, some pretty serious um, dysfunction. Staff, some staff would, would be, you know, in at nine o'clock a minute before classes started and they'd be <laughs> gone one minute after class had wow. finished. Um, kids didn't respect um, the staff, and the staff didn't respect. So mm -hmm. it was it was a melting pot, really, of just horrible stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and and most of that I didn't really know until I got into the job. So um, from the outset, I do want to say, and, and this is really important that I always say this when I tell people this story. Um, there were some some really really good people, really good staff. Yeah. Um, at the school at the time, and if it wasn't for them, um, my job would have been a lot harder. So I want to acknowledge all of those really good people. When I talk about the staff, I'm not talking about all of them. Mm -hmm. it, it was a, it was a percentage and a quite a big percentage, but there were some really cool people there as well. Yeah. Anyway, um, I walked in into something that you know, I couldn't believe, and m my heart um, wouldn't allow me 
to walk away from that after the, you know, I realised that this was a pretty dysfunctional place. And I, you know, I held on to my, some core values that I had about making a difference, about, um, about you know, ensuring that young people are given every opportunity to be successful regardless of, of any barriers that are put in front of them, including some staff who, who, um, who, who didn't you know, value young people and were in the school for all the wrong reasons. Mm. Um, so young principal, Samoan principal at that, went into the school, wanted to make a difference, is determined to make a difference, and then comes, a, comes up against this barrage of, of anti-row party um, rubbish um, with, with an agenda um, after about you know, six months to get rid of me. And I remember you know, sort of standing up in front of the staff, often uh, at a staff briefing, and... Um, and, and talking about the vision for the school that, you know, these kids that we have in front of us have only got one opportunity in life yeah. and it's the next five years. We can make them or we can break them or we can continue this, this journey of ours which is going down the, the drain hole pretty quickly. Mm. And I remember, and, and without a doubt, I was sincere about, about that, you know, that, um, that responsibility that we've been given. What, what, what are we going to take here? And like I said, there were a group, a small group of staff that said, yeah, we're right behind. Let's turn this place around. But there was a large group of staff who said, hell no. There's no, they used to call me boy. Uh, I wish they'd still call me boy now. But, but it was an insult of my age. Yeah. And there were insults about my ethnicity. And yep. it, was, it was ugly stuff. And so that was the group that was saying, hell no, we're, you know, we don't want any of this stuff. This, this is all crazy. These kids are, are not going to change. You're just wasting your time and we're not going to have this you know, young Samoan boy come in mm. and tell us what to do. So they did everything they possibly could to, 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 to bring me down and to stop you know, this desire to make Penrose a better place. And I remember you know, um, hearing and passing that that on one particular weekend, this group of staff had um, had met off-site um, to discuss how they can how they can get rid of of me. Wow. And I remember hearing that thing. Oh my goodness! You know, what is this about? And so that was just you know one of many many examples of um, how they resisted, mm -hmm. how they pushed back, um, how they actively. Um, you know, just um, tried to um, hold back this principal and leadership team and board from, from doing what was right. And it was hard, you know, sort of standing up there, painting the smile on the face um, every time I met the whole staff and say, look, this is what we're doing, knowing that there's a group of staff yeah. down there that hated my guts. But I wasn't, you know, I wasn't about to just to walk away from that. It was, it was, it was too important to those young people. Mm -hmm. And you know, if that was part of my my leadership and my my core values, I ain't gonna run away. Of course. So, um, I I decided to, you know, just stay put, and and slowly but surely gather momentum by by uh, appealing to the hearts and minds of the staff who, who were there. And, and the small group that was supportive grew, you know, sort of almost month by month, but it was actually sort of year after year. Mm. And then, you know, I, I, I began to sense a change after probably year one or year two. Yep. It took that long. But, you know, my body is, is full of scars, full of scars. And would I want to go back and, and go through all that again, again in a hurry? You bet. If it meant getting the same outcomes. Because like I said, you know, the, 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 the scars actually um, they, they actually taught me something. You know, there's some good stuff about scarring. Mm -hmm. And that it made me a, a better leader and it made me a better person. I understood people and I, under, I understood leadership. I learned probably a lot about leadership and people in my seven years at Howick than I probably have in my, in my entire career through those experiences. 
And like I said, so after maybe year two or year three, I started to see a change and, and suddenly there was this transformation. We, um, we, 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 we tapped into the hearts and the minds of, of not just the staff, but also the kids. And they started to, to see, my goodness, there are some, some people in this place that actually care yeah. about me. Maybe my perception of some of the staff wasn't actually a true reflection of everyone. everyone. And so the, this, this movement began to happen. It was the most incredible um, journey experience in my career for that reason. And so year five, um, uh, we had got to a point where we said, look, let's, um, let, let's appeal to the Ministry of Education mm -hmm. uh, and see whether or not they can, they can join us on this journey. And whilst we've been doing a lot of internal stuff, we've got some professional development in for teaching. So, you know, you talk about uh, capability and lifting their practice because yeah. they only know what they know. Yep. And so we, we did some training with them. We did some work with the kids in terms of behavior, uh, expected, um, you know, behavior in class and uh, culture, all that sort of stuff. We worked with our community. We, we got our, our kids' grades um, up through good teaching and engagement stuff. And, and so we started to see everything sort of trending upwards. Public opinion started to change. Parent perception started to change. Kids' attitudes towards their learning changed. Mm. Staff learning uh, and attitude changed. Mm -hmm. We were ready for the next best thing. Went to the ministry and said, hey, look, we've got an opportunity here to make this a even better than what it currently is. Can we have some money to rebuild the school? Yep. So luckily, through the help of some, some key people in the mix, um, they gave us, I think, about $18, $20 million wow. to rebuild most of the school, which we did. So we had internally, had done some major improvements. Externally, mm. the property, mm -hmm. you know, it went from um, really ugly stuff to something that the kids could see and feel proud of. And feel proud of. And so in the end, after my seven years there, um, I left the school in much, 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 much better shape. And, uh, and today, you know, it continues to flourish. But if it wasn't, I, th I think if it wasn't for, you know, that vision, you know, and you, you asked me right at the very, very beginning about purpose yep. and desire, that was a really, really good example of it. Because yeah. if, if, you know, that school it was heading towards closure without a doubt. And had it not been for the for the desire and the will and the purpose of a group of staff to begin with to do something different and make this place a you know a happy flourishing learning environment mm -hmm. that everyone felt um, and belonged mm -hmm. you know it, it it would never have, have ever got off the ground and it's one of those things you know where like i said um, many times i you know i'd go home put my my head into my hands and, and, and say to my wife, Kerry, I, I don't want to go back there. You know, it's, it's killing me. But you, you build a sense of resilience in there. You, 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 you are driven by your, the core values of, of never giving up. And, you know, when times get tough, you just, all that sort of stuff, you know, and caring for and knowing the potential of young and old. Um, all the way through to, wow, you know, the, the, um, the Education Review Office came through in my second to last year, or last year I think it was, and they had, they had written some really horrible reports at, at the start for all the right reasons, you mm -hmm. know, the school was, was dysfunctional, yep. of course they're going to write some yeah, horrible yeah. things. But in the last review they, they wrote before, just before I left was probably the most, the most amazing sentence and most satisfying moment of my career. And, it, and I still remember the very first line, there's not very, too many principals, school leaders that would be able to do that, but um, the Education Review Office in the very, very first line of the report way back then said, the staff and students were proud of their school. <laughs> and, that, and that's all I needed. And um, you know, I've got that etched in my mind because, because in the end, that is why I do the mahi. Yeah. In the end, that is why I get so much satisfaction. That is why I've got so many scars over, over my body. That is why that journey was the most amazing, um, you know, seven years that I've 
ever had and probably never will experience again because it was just such an amazing transformation. Mm. Unbelievable. Mm. You know, through the grace of God, I got through. But actually, along the way, um, I think God had put in some, some key people <laughs> that were supporting me yeah. and, and propping me up and, and you know, giving me quiet taps on the back when, when I was down and just making sure that you know, there, were, there were key moments where he just knew that you know, this leader was just about ready to collapse in a heap. But along comes someone. And then you know, that person becomes the, the motivation to, to keep, keep going. I'll tell you a quick story just before we finish. Yeah, yeah. And that is, um, you know, I did receive a, a leadership um, and I was really proud to receive that. I'm not someone um, who goes looking for those things. I, I, you know, I'd rather be in the background, you know, even, even having a conversation like yeah. this is a little bit awkward for yep. me because uh, it's not, not about me. I'm just a part of a, you know, a, a process which I, I find enormously satisfying. But anyway, um, back in the day at, at Penrose, we, um, we, we used to apply for lots of uh, trust grants and stuff. And, and, um, and, and a lot of the charitable organisations were really good with their money and they saw that we were trying. Anyway, um, I got a call from the Sir Peter Blake Trust and I didn't quite click in terms of that isn't a, you know, a, 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 a trust in the same sense as you know, make application for money. Mm. It, it's a different type of trust. So um, I got a call out of the blue expecting it. It was giving me some confirmation about a, an application we made. And, um, and it, was, it was the most um, heartfelt, you know, sort of uh, personal moment where I just, I just felt really good about um, the work that I was doing. And it, it almost confirmed, you know, that, that um, I'm here for a purpose. I'm here because this is what I'm meant to be doing. Yeah. Anyway, the phone call was from um, um, one of the, the conveners of the trust who was ringing to tell me that I've been nominated, I, I don't know by who, but for um, a prestigious uh, Sir Peter Blake um, Emerging Leader Award. Yeah. And honestly, it came right at the, at the right time for me because it was, again, it was um, one of those moments where you, you, know, you, you start to wonder whether or not you know your work is is um, is is of value, and, and I quite know what was happening at the time. But I, that, that 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 phone call, forget about the award and all of that, was was one of those people. It was God's hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, well done, boy. <laughs> well done. You know, keep it up. You know, things will get tough, but keep it up. Yeah. And that that was amazing. You know, and I. Um, I, and that's why it's so important for me to do these sorts of things, is because there might be someone out there that that is in the same you know position. Just keep going, um, because there's this, there's a real person, there's an individual out there, there's someone who will benefit from your mahi, um, who will go on and and contribute in some way, all because you've touched the hearts and mind of that young person. Amazing, eh? Amazing. Yeah, and I and, and you know, I, 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 like I said, you know, I love the work that I do. I, I love making a difference. I love contributing and participating in this country of ours, and yep. and um, and know that every young person should have equal access to to an education um, that will allow them to be happy. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful story, and, and you're just just the most incredible person for having pulled all of that off. I know you give a lot of credit to to everyone around you, but I mean, I have to tell you that uh, mm. all of that wouldn't be possible. Most people wouldn't be around there if it wasn't for you and the work that you're doing. Um, so thank you. Yeah, mm. it's. It, I think I feel like we tend to forget how much of an uh, how much of an impact we have mm. when we're surrounded by a team. Yeah. But I need to tell you that you're an incredible person mm. and you're doing amazing work. And Thank you, sir. the transformation of Wintry Hill is, is, mm. speaks for itself. Um, there's so much here that I could, uh, I could go on and I wouldn't be respectful of your time. Mm. Um, I know you've got a flight to catch, so yeah. I'm going to jump ahead and hopefully we can catch up again once you're back at school. Yeah, definitely. Um, that'll be really interesting to, mm. to come in there. And, um, so I do a little thing right at the end of the, this, the show where it's called Five for Five. So I'll ask you uh, five questions. For question number one, I need one answer. For question number two, I need two answers. Three, four, five, so on. Um, 
So we'll jump to that. And like I said, one word answer. No, no, it doesn't need to be one word oh, answer. Okay. It's just one answer for that question. Oh, okay, gotcha. And then question number two, I need two answers for right. that question. Um, so question number one, do you have a favorite quote or, or thought of, you know, like a school of thought or anything like that? That's just one that's really important to you. Um, I think my... Mm, I, 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 mm, I lots of... Um, I, you know, my... Um, I think my favorite, it's not necessarily a quote, but my, my favorite um, leadership statement, I, mm -hmm. I think, is, is around my definition of resiliency. And, and that is um, re resiliency um, is getting, getting back up when you can't, yeah, something like that. Yeah. In other words, um, you know, you, 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 if there's one thing about um, uh, about being vulnerable or, or being courageous, uh, is is knowing that you, you know you're going, you're going to get kicked like that group of staff. You know, I, I put myself out there and you know I got kicked many 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 times. Mm -hmm. I'm resilient enough to get kicked. And get back up. Yep. Question number two: Two goals for twenty twenty one. Well, my my uh, goal, um, my my healthy goal is I'm going to run uh, my ninth uh, marathon yes. in October, um, and that will be the Auckland October one. Yep. Um, my second goal um, is. Um, is to um, to have a bit of change in terms of my leadership. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Question number three: Three people that inspire you. I I've just read a book by um, Brene Brown, mm -hmm. and I've never met her. She's an American um, person, but um, she has. Um, um, sort of captured a lot of my journey in her book, Dare to Lead. Dare to Lead. Yeah, and um, and and I'm I'm inspired by what she has to say about courageous and vulnerable leaders. Mm -hmm. And um, in the book, she talks a little bit about um, you know removing the armor and and being able to be yourself. And it, it, it sort of resonated with, with me because that's that's what I am trying to do with with my teaching staff um, and and young people. Teaching staff in there, in, in order for them to take risks, mm -hmm. they need to be able to trust. Yeah. And and when you when, when you don't always have that trust of failing, then you're going to put up the armor and not not do that. But for the kids' perspective. Um, you know, we we want them to try new things. We want them to push, you know, the boundaries of and explore stuff. And sometimes, you know, they're afraid a little bit about what others might think of them if mm. if their you know their ideas are a little bit wacky or, or even putting up their hand and asking a question. Mm -hmm. So they have to remove some armour and be vulnerable. When we get to that sense of vulnerability, where you know, I trust you and you're not going to judge me just because I'm trying something new. I might fail, yep. but you're not going to criticise me for that. That's when true growth yeah. and, and, and richness of, of imagination occurs. Absolutely. So she's inspired me. You know, I, lots of people in passing, um, um, people who, anyone who really is, is making a difference um, and knowing that you know that that this world of ours um, is more than just about me or you, yep. you know, have that have that bigger picture, yeah. that bigger vision, that bigger purpose of of knowing that um, you know we're here for a short amount of time. It's not, it can't just be just about us. Mm. It's, it's got to be a bigger purpose, greater than you or me. Yeah, very cool. Uh, question number four: Four things that you're grateful for. I'm grateful for family. Um, I'm grateful for the young people who 
who um, amaze me, inspire me, um, do extraordinary things every single day. Yeah. I'm grateful for, for our country, um, for the living in a, you know, in a, in a society um, that is, um, allows us to, to, to be people and, and to, yeah, and to enjoy life. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful to um, the opportunities that are here in in education, and I'm you know I'm grateful for the work that I'm doing currently, and the possibilities of being able to make a difference nice. um, at a systems level. Yeah. Nice. And then uh, number five, your top five league players of all time. Oh my goodness! Just to yeah. Throw a spanner in there. <laughs> um, I, I normally I'd go old. And then go to modern, but I t my um, my absolute um, uh, st star player um, at the moment is uh, a Melbourne Storm player. Um, is it Ryan Pappenhausen? Anyway, fullback. He's out injured at the moment, but he is an all round player. Yep. He's a, he's a rake. He's really really light, but he's probably one of the best players um, currently still playing. Wow. Um, uh, five, eh? Yep. One, um, um, someone who I was uh, fortunate to play with back in the day, Mel Meninga, opposite to uh, Pappenhausen, in that he was he was like a Mack truck, <laughs> and uh, I have to say that when I was playing against him, I was playing for Parramatta against Canberra, Bruce Stadium. Um, and he's one of these players who, if you've got the ball in your hand, you're running towards you, actually want to trip yourself <laughs> up. Uh, Mel Meninga, uh, Mick Cronin is an amazing player who, as a kid, I, I remember. Ray Price, all old-timers. Yep. And uh, probably another m more recent one, um, and have to say a Warriors player, Stacey Jones, all-round uh, player who um, just in incredibly he's gifted. A legend of the game. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And then There's my final, five. yep, excellent. And my final question is, who is Eva Ropati in essence? I think um, I am um, a person who who I never ever thought would be a leader in a in a traditional sense. Totally uncomfortable with that word of being a leader. Mm. I'm a person who who's incredibly humble. Um, I'm shy. Um, you know, you, I had I've had to work on that that shyness, yep. um, um, which is you know again a little bit ironic considering that I'm a sort of a public mm. community person. Um, but it, but in the end, um, I just I I I I I've, I've got many traits from my parents. And one of the one of the main ones I got from my my parents was was really to to be someone who will who will serve a community, who will be able to leave a legacy behind that isn't necessarily about um, me, but about the work that I've left behind mm -hmm. um, for others. And and so I think in essence that. That's me, a, a person who, who, who just, who, who just wants to be the conduit between um, people um, that makes things happen, yeah. and I and I, I I'd like to think that that's you know who I am, um, and the work that I am doing now and hopefully in the future. You you may not always remember my name, but you'll remember, I think, some of the things that were possible because of some planning or some, you know, some design that happened way back then. That's me. Yeah, and I have no doubt that that's going to be the case. And, and I'm confident that your name is going to be etched in history for a very long time. Um, like I said, Eva, there's a lot that I want to cover with you. I want to talk about leadership and mm. what parents can do outside of uh, the school environment. But... Again, I want to be respectful every time. Mm. And I wanted to stay quiet because I, I realized how much of a masterclass and resilient. And you talked mm. about scarring and, and faith yeah. as well. Yeah. Just how important all that was. So I, I just wanted to soak that in selfishly for myself. Yeah. Um, but I have to catch up with you once you're back at school. And I, I want to come there and, 
Mm. Um, even possibly talk to some mm. of the kids and yeah. it'll be really cool. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for being here. Mm. You're, you're a true leader. Mm. Thank uh, you. And you're a true inspiration. And, and I, I, thank I you have, for your time. And I have to say thank you to you and the work that, that you're doing. Um, you know, I didn't hesitate when, I know it took a little while for us to yeah. uh, reconnect, but, but this is, you know, the, the, the work you're doing in terms of giving people like myself and the other people that you, you've interviewed an opportunity to share their story, you know, because it is, where, you know, the, the world can be a pretty horrible place at times, but there are people, um, um, and you're one of them, who's, who's providing, you know, I talk about the, being a conduit. So good. Thank you so much for having me Thank on your you. program. Um, you know, any time that uh, you want to come to my place and have another cordial, uh, I'd love to, uh, to host you. All the very best. Thanks so much. Good on you. Cheers.